For the following exercises, find the average rate of change of each function on the interval specified. So to find the average rate of change, just remember that the average rate of change is simply the slope of a straight line that connects two points on a certain graph, right? And also remember how we calculate slope, right? That's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, meaning that all we need are two pairs of coordinates. We need an x1 and a y1. We need an x2 and a y2. And if we can find two pairs of points, right, then we are able to plug it into our slope formula and find the slope, a.k.a. the average rate of change. So in doing a problem like this, my job is to find two points on this graph. Okay, and here are the x values. These are the intervals. All right, so let's call this value x1 and let's call this one x2. Now, firstly, for x1, we would take this and plug it on in for x. Right, so it would simply be uh, j of 1 is equal to 3 times 1 cubed. Obviously, that's 3. So we have a coordinate here. When x is 1, we realize that j of 1, a.k.a. this is just y, all right, um, that would be 3. So this is one coordinate, okay, one pair of coordinates. Next, we've got to find the next pair. So we take the next x value and we take that and we plug it on in for x. So let's do that. So now we have j of 1 plus h. Sounds scary, but it, we follow the same rules, right? So we're going to take 3 and then plug in now for x, 1 plus h, and cube it. So how do we do that? Well, first we would square it, I think would be the easiest way to do it. So j of 1 plus h is equal to then 3 times 1 plus h times 1 plus h, you can write it out three times. First, do the foiling between these two parentheses. All right, so this is 1 plus h equals 3 times. Now, this would be 1 squared uh, plus, right, 1 times h is h. And then h times 1 is also h, so you got two h's. And then h times h is h squared. Now, you have this one that remains, so write that down. And now just do another factoring here, okay? So this is 1 plus h is equal to now 3. Oops. And now we can, it doesn't matter how we do it, uh, you know, we can take this one and, you know, multiply it across. So we can take this and go this way. It doesn't really matter. And we just got to make sure we do all of the permutations. So let's take uh, 1 squared, which is 1, right? Times 1 is just itself 1. All right, I'll actually get rid of the square sign because it might be a little confusing. Because 1 squared is just 1, obviously. And then that's going to be plus. Then 1 times our h value is going to be h. Then I go to the next term. So 2h times 1 is going to be 2h. And 2h times h is now going to be 2, 2h squared. And then h squared times 1, right, is going to be h squared. And then h squared times h is going to be h cubed h cubed. All right. So now what we can do is simplify this. So now we have j1 plus h, j of 1 plus h is equal to now 3. Let's simplify everything in the parentheses. All right. So we're going to have 1 uh, plus 3h plus 3h squared plus h cubed. Okay. And all I did was combine the like terms uh, here and here. And then what I'm going to do is distribute the 3. Okay, I'm going to take this and now distribute it to everyone. So this will be j1 plus h is equal now 3 plus 9h plus 9h squared plus 3h cubed. All right, and this is really my y value now. All right, this is the y value. So now what we'll do is let's just erase all this. Okay, if you have to look back, just rewind the video. All right, so let's just erase all this algebra work. Right. All right, and let's just bring this up so we have a little more space. All right, so my coordinate now, remember this is the y value, so the coordinate is 1 plus h, comma, that's, excuse me, that's the x value, I don't know if I said that, I might have said y, this is the x value, all right, and this whole bad boy down here is the y value, so this is 3 plus 9h plus 9h squared plus 3h cubed, okay, 
It's just not a nice number, but it still means the same thing. It's the y value. Now remember, we called this x1, and therefore this will be y1. We also called this x2, right? And this will be now y2. So now we have our slope formula, where it says y2 minus y1. So let's take the y2 value. This will be 3 uh, plus 9h plus 9h squared plus 3h cubed. And subtract from that now the y1 value, subtract it by 3. That whole thing now divided by our x2 value of 1 plus h minus our x1 value of 1. So what's going to happen? 1's cancel, right? 3's will also cancel. So what are we left with? We are left with now, oops, change the color. We are left with now that the slope will equal 9h plus 9h squared plus 3h cubed all over h. And what I realize is that I have an h in common amongst every term, right? So essentially you can cancel this h with one h from every term. Okay, so this gets essentially reduced down to two. This two got reduced down to one, all right? And now we easily can see the slope that it will be, and I'm gonna order this from highest then to lowest, okay? So this will be 3h squared plus 9h plus 9. All right, and you can factor out, if you want to factor out a 3 now, you by all means you can. It doesn't really matter from here, uh, but I'm going to leave that as the answer. Then the second one. All right, so we got to do literally the same thing. Okay, it's going to be the same process, so let's try to, let's try to breeze through this one. So this will be x1 and y1. So when we take our x1 value, we're finding r of now 2, Plug in 2 for t. Now I know this is technically saying t here. I should really be calling this t1 and and uh, and y1, but it, do, it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, so this will be 2 cubed. And we get a value here of, uh, this will become, my brain is fried at the moment. This will become 8, right? And then times 4, that's going to be 32. So our coordinate now will be x was 2, and my y value we found to be 32. All right, great. Let's box that. All right, next thing is I'm just going to erase this just to save some space. Okay. So now let's do the x2 value. All right. So this was now r of 2 plus h is going to equal 4. Plug in 4t, 2 plus h. And now we got to cube this. Okay. So let's, I'm going to go, you know, we're going to, I'm going to try to do this a little, you know, faster. All right, so first square, uh, first square uh, two of the terms in there, right? Take take this term and multiply itself by itself first. So we're going to have 4 times that it's going to be 4 plus 4h plus h squared. And then times 2 plus h, okay? Basically, I did all the steps before on this problem, all right? So now I'm just trying to move it a little faster through the problem. And so now this will be... Uh, I'm going to distribute again here. So this will be f this will be 8 plus then that will become 4h plus now I move on to the second term. Then I multiply that by the 2, right? So that's going to be 8h plus then uh, 4h squared. And now I'm going to move on to the last one, distribute that to both. So this is going to be plus 2h squared plus h cubed. Okay, and uh, don't forget that this whole thing, all right, which I almost did, that's what happens sometimes when you move a little quickly, all right, don't forget that this whole thing is still, there's still a 4 out here. So we still got to multiply the whole thing by 4. So let's do that as the last step. So this is R2 plus H. This will work out. So I'm just literally distributing this to every single term, okay? So this is going to be uh, 32 plus 32h plus, oh no, what am I talking about? <laughs> 4 times 4 is 4 times 4, 32? Huh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so now we have 16h, and then this will be 32h, and this is now 16h squared, and this is then 8h squared, and now we have 4, let me just move this over a little bit. So now we're going to have, oh, parenthesis went with it. And then we're going to have 4h cubed, okay? 
So this is now my, this is now our Y value. So let's erase up here now all this work, all this beautiful work. And this is now the Y value. Right, so we're gonna take this, let's just move it up. All right, and the second coordinate here that will, uh, that will come out now, one second. The second value here that will that we will ascertain will be two plus h comma, and now this whole thing, okay? So I'm just gonna copy it. Oop, one second. And it's off the page again. Sorry guys, just bear with me one minute. And here's now the, here's now the coordinate. Doesn't that look lovely? Oh yes. So now let's move this up. We got our two coordinates. All right, let's call this, uh, one second. Let's call this now, we gotta just move this straight up. So let's just call this x1, y1, x2, and y2. And now we just gotta go to work, right? So the slope will be now equal to, here's my, this was my y2 value, right? I just copied it, okay? That will be then subtracted by, subtracted by our y1, subtracted by 32, okay? And this is now all over my x2 value of two plus h minus then my x1 value of two. So some things are gonna cancel. The twos cancel, the 32 is also cancel. So now, if you notice, the, there's a pattern here. So now it's gonna be 16, 16 h plus 32 h plus 16 h squared plus eight h squared plus four h cubed all over h, and again, we can reduce one of them, right? One of them from each term. So those go bye-bye, this goes bye-bye, and then this turns into a square, okay? And then you can combine some more terms. I mean, I don't know, why, why didn't I combine these terms yet? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna combine them now, all right? So finally, the slope here works out to be, so 16 plus our 32 is gonna be 48, so we got 48, and then plus my 16h plus my 8h is going to be 20, 24h. And then I got 4h squared left over, 4h h squared. And you can factor out a common factor there, but I'm just gonna leave it alone. All right, guys, so this one's long and it, it, it's definitely challenging, but uh, the principles all still apply, all right? So thanks for tuning in, hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, we'll see you next time.